Bit of a shock in the Merseyside derby, um, but it has led to a lot of conversation about Jurgen Klopp, of course, because his tenure at Liverpool is coming to an end. It's the farewell season. It was the last Merseyside derby and Everton don't win many of them, but they did, of course. They won 2-0. Um, let's reflect on the game, first of all. And then from there, I want to talk about the possibility that this is a good time for Klopp to go because it's the end of a cycle. I'm seeing a lot of that on Twitter from... From Liverpool fans. Not all Liverpool fans, but some. And we all, we all discuss that. But the game itself, Kweku, what were your thoughts on, on Everton's performance? You've got to give Everton so much credit. They used the crowd to their advantage. Yeah. And uh, there was a feeling in the air. I think Liverpool are a little bit leggy. Um, but Everton played very well. And if you look at their last four fixtures, you take the 6-0 against Chelsea out of it. They've won three out of the last four. Clean sheets in those three wins as well. So Sean Dyche deserves a lot of credit. And this is an Everton who are facing who have faced uh, point deductions this season. Yeah. And in terms of the game itself, perfect strategy. Scored goals at the right time. And really and truly, Liverpool had a few chances. And we can talk about Darwin Nunes. We can talk about how profligate they've been in front of goal. But if you're Everton, that's going to happen. You just have to make sure that you don't concede in those situations and hope that you take your chances. Dominic Calvert-Lewin scoring for them is huge in terms of between now and the end of the season, even though I do think they're, they're not safe mathematically, but I do think they're pretty much, yeah, pretty pretty much close, there. Um, Jared Br Branthwaite getting on the score sheet as well, especially after the disaster class against Chelsea where yeah. he's had so many plaudits this season. And I know there's jobs not to score goals, but for him to get on the score sheet and kind of put that to the bed in terms of the chat about if he's overrated or not was huge for Everton. And they've just done a job on, on Liverpool from start to finish and Sean Dyche was, was absolutely chuffed to bits you could tell that he was very very happy with what they'd done in that game and I think Everton can be proud of especially because of how much adversity they faced this season and how difficult of a season it's been how they've ended this year has yeah. been absolutely incredible and Sean Dyche deserves a lot of credit in terms Definitely. of obviously it's not just this game it's the, the Palace game as well which is obviously cost them because they've got maximum points in that in, in both games as quick you said that there were chances for Liverpool, you know, as an Arsenal fan who I think Arsenal fans and Liverpool fans should all get in a room and kind oh, of go, go, just just have a little bit of a sort of therapy cuddle session and talk about Man City because I think they do, do play on their minds all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. And there is this feeling that they've got to be perfect. And when you've got to be perfect, you've got to take chances. Mm -hmm. And so when it gets to that point, that you need that little bit of composure. Yeah. Do you think that's something that, are you surprised that Liverpool have struggled in that department? genuinely surprised only because of we're mentioning the names of Darwin Nunes and possibly Luis Diaz missing chances but Salah has missed chances in the last he's four to five off. literally the last run of games he's missed many chances and that's why I'm more surprised because Salah's been here before he's been in this position they've competed with City like year after year after year except for the last season so he knows what it's like to be in this position with the pressure on you to keep your team going but I guess he doesn't have that strike force partnership like he did with Sadio Mane I guess mm. and it's not working but when he's had 1v1 chances you're seeing the ball go over the crossbar and you think this is not the Salah that we know and mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's been difficult for Liverpool I'm really surprised and it's it's a shame really because life comes at you fast in the Premier League <laughs> I mean literally just the <laughs> other day week ago, Trent finished, was just right? saying you know about us I think it was when we lost to Villa I think it was when he said you know obviously it's playing on Arsenal's mind that the, the, you, when you have to play before your rivals or after your rivals and it you know you, but they, that's they a tell from him isn't it that's yeah. playing on his mind as well and on their mind and right he was kind of at fault for the second goal going in, to be honest with you. So <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. saying, so, like, yeah. no, not <laughs> hard, but like, yeah. we, we have to learn. Obviously, the game's a game. We enjoy it. We love these moments. But I think you, you, when you're in a title race, and this, this goes for Arsenal players too, because City, they're a beast at this. You yeah. just have to stay focused. And composed, I think. Yeah. That's why I think, say, someone like Trossard, to bring it to Arsenal for a second, it, yeah. I think he's such an integral part yeah. of that squad oh, because huge. there's just that, like, there's a level of calm mm. yeah. that he has in front of goal that... that other players don't don't seem to have. Let's get to the end of the cycle element of it though. So <laughs> Klopp, so first of all, if the Klopp news doesn't come out when it comes out, mm. do you think this season is different for Liverpool? Do you think they would have got to this point? Do you think they would have combusted the way that they have combusted in recent weeks? Um, that's such a good question. It's a difficult one to answer where, where Liverpool would have been. Let's go back to the beginning of the season. What was Liverpool's goal at the beginning of the season? To get back in the top four. They finished fifth yeah. last year. Mm. And so they have overachieved. And I've said it from the beginning. If you're bringing in a completely different midfield, 
in Gravenberge, in Sabozlai, in McAllister, in Endo. Yeah. If Liverpool would have gone on to win this league, it would have been an indictment on everybody else. Because that this was not a team set up to win the league. Everybody talked about how how threatening their attackers can be in terms of Luis Diaz, Darwin Nunes, Salah, Gakpo and Jota. Everybody knew how dangerous they could be. But if that side of your team is letting you down in terms of scoring goals and you've got a whole new midfield and then you've had injuries to your back line including your goalkeepers with the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. Liverpool have done well to get here and I think that we should credit them for being in this position. What will happen is inevitably people will look back at Jurgen Klopp's time at Anfield and, and be like, what, one league title? Um, and if Arteta goes and wins the league title this year, it's like you've got the same league title, amount of league titles mm -hmm. as Mikel Arteta. And so his legacy will be affected because of the way that Liverpool kind of capitulated towards back end of the season. But if Liverpool had gone under the radar and finished third this year, no one's having any kind of conversations about whether it's the right time for Klopp to leave because in my mind, that is an insane school of thought. Insane. Really? Why do you think it's insane though? He's leaving anyway. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> That's it, come on. Someone's got to play devil's advocate. Come on, man. Like, Jurgen Klopp, a man that we were all putting in our top five Premier League managers of all time. It's never in my lifetime been as good as this for Liverpool. You can point to the fact that they've only won one Premier League, which I did outline there. And the Champions only, League, of course. They won Champions League. They got to three Champions League finals. Yeah. That's crazy. I know they won one, but the two they lost was against Real Madrid. And we saw what Real Madrid did to Man City in the Champions League. He's done an incredible job, won every single trophy there is to win on the club level. And for Liverpool fans to sit there and say, it might be the right time for him to leave. Let's look at when legendary managers have left clubs before. <laughs> He's into let's, it. Let's, I'm going to get a cup of tea. <laughs> <Let's do it. laughs> when Sir Alex Ferguson left Manchester United, how did Man United do in the years after that? Not great. Arsenal Wenger, there was a lot of Arsenal fans saying Wenger out. But the years after Arsenal Wenger were, were difficult. Yeah. When even when Rafa Benitez, who's not necessarily a Liverpool legend, left Liverpool, mm -hmm. let's see the years after that. When Jose Mourinho left Chelsea, it was not as easy as it ha had been previously under him. Mm -hmm. To say that Jurgen Klopp has come to the end of his cycle at Liverpool is absolute insanity. Right. This is one of the greatest managers of all time. And Liverpool fans, come and chat to me next season where you might have yeah. Arz Slot. You might it. have Amarim. And tell me if you think things are as good as it is right now under yeah. Jurgen Klopp. Honestly, I cannot agree more. It is the most shambolic take <laughs> yeah, I've honestly. ever, ever heard. Because if you're going to throw the end of the cycle thing... Do it last do year. It last yeah, year. Do, it last year. do it when he's proven. <laughs> yeah. He's proven that he's got a group of players. And again, look at those. Look at the recent games. If those and it is such fine lines. If those shots go in, if he's got Ollie Watkins up front instead of Darwin Nunes, then it's different. Like yeah. the, if it, there's no Darwin Nunes got to score that one against Everton. Has yeah. to. Yeah. Has they win to. that game. It's different. And so the, the thought that it's, oh, it's the end of the cycle anyway. It, it's it's so silly and I think the reason why you might even allude to the fact that that's the case is because I think I think that the journey that the club which is a, a which is a, a club full of feeling and romance anyway has had with this guy who is full of feeling and romance I think that has overwhelmed them in some of these games and so the the sort of the, the legginess is mm. partly I think down to this desire to, to have that fairy tale ending, mm. but that is such um, that's so intense. Mm. That's so intense, and so I think when they had needed that little bit more energy in the sort of lull of, of January with when they're playing kids, you haven't got the sort of you haven't got the you know the finish line in sight, and so their 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 motivation was was up and above the rest because yeah. it's like let's go do it for Klopp. Yeah. Now it's now it gets to this point, I think, and you've got the adrenaline of the run in as well. And all the games, I think it's just got. I just think it's tipped over the other Can side. Can I just point to one game to tell you why Young Klopp is one of the greatest managers we've ever seen? And why it's an insane take to say that it's the end of the cycle. Man City went to Anfield with Erlen Haaland in decent form. Mm -hmm. Do you know what Liverpool's back line was that day? Kellos. Kelleher and goal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right back, Connor Bradley, Kwanzaa, Virgil van Dijk, and left back was Joe Gomez against Erlen Haaland and they kept him quiet. Mm. I'm sorry, but no other manager in the Premier League is doing the job that well with those personnel. He's done such a great job with limited resources comparatively to the other sides in the Premier League. So it's the player, the, you know, this failure, loosely used, and it's not really a failure, but like no. this, this um, falling away, it's the players, not the manager for you? Unfortunately, I love Mo Salah. We've actually recall about I how good he is. I was just going to say He's he's a player that is, he's not the same Mo Salah from two or three years ago, no? Mm -hmm. He's not. I got asked this question this week about Mo Salah. And the thing for me is that 
I thought Virgil van Dijk was finished, but he was just still just coming back from an yeah. injury. I would be very wary of I'm saying, saying he's finished, finished when he's a few months out of the probably the first injury he's had mm. in his whole career. Yeah. I think he will come back strong. He will. Do I just feel like the, the players that you mentioned there, the, the thing they all have in common is they're all young. They've still got a, a career ahead of them for Liverpool after Klopp's gone. They may not fit in the new manager's plans or not, but the, the other players that are senior players, they don't know what their future's mm. going to be after Klopp goes. It's going to be a whole different right. system. And do you know, when it gets to these games and you're not playing great, you need yeah. to get so, someone to get you out of jail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like Trent does it with with like a pass through, one of the most gorgeous passes I've seen in a long time. Yeah. So he's kind of done his bit, but the, the players that needed to take their chances, one of those probably needed to be Salah, like it has been over the last four or five years or whatever he's been there. Yeah. And he's just a little bit off it at yeah. the moment. And so it's, again, those fine margins that, that make the difference. If, and if you ask Liverpool fans, the player that they've missed the most is Sadio Mane. There was, yeah. a, there was a point in the game against, was it Fulham? Um, where Trent plays the ball in, and Diaz gets his head on it and it just goes wide. I'm like, Mane scores that. Trent obviously bells him out by scoring the free kick and they will go on to win that game. But there's been moments like that this season where Liverpool haven't scored the first goal, mm. the opposition have, and then they're chasing it. And this season, I feel like every Liverpool game I watch, they're chasing. It's, it's frantic, they're trying to get something because they're a goal behind. And that's not sustainable. We talked about Arsenal before. Arsenal are always ahead. And when Arsenal have let things slip, it's because they've let it slip. Yeah. But when you're chasing, you're trying to get a goal and then another one to go again, eventually that's going to come come to roost. And we've seen that at Liverpool this season. But Jurgen Klopp coming to the end of his cycle, Not just, go, just watch him in his next job. Just watch him in his next job. He's yeah. been the Champions League. Yeah. <laughs> and, watch, and watch Liverpool next season too, right? Exactly. I think that's, that's going to be that's going to be a real change and it's going to be tough. 